Hello. Mm. How are you, honey? Meanwhile, it looks like I might be coming home early. Yeah. Uh, very little paperwork on the stripping and labeling side, and given yesterday was Labor Day, there was very little the the break. Welcome into the Paper Plane Inn. I'm Mikoto Nui, and thank you guys for actually coming in by. Joining with me today is, for temporarily, is my boyfriend Steve. Yes, I am currently here like a little gopher about to go back into his hole. <laughs> Honey, stop. You're okay. Okay, let's see. Ask Speaking of which, how's your foot? Um, my foot is okay. It's just well, it it was really hard for me to walk around the ha the house earlier this morning because it was in so much pain, and it's bruising really badly. So long as I don't keep in too much pressure on it, I think I'm okay. Did you put more ice on it? I I used an ice pack just now, so uh, and I put put it back in the freezer until it's um a okay. Okay. All right. Um, I'll explain context of the foot later. But right now, thank you guys for actually um popping by here today. As we are finally going to get to doing um an art stream. We haven't been doing this for a while. Usually it, it's um pals to plushies, but why don't we try doing something a little bit different for a change? Okay. Because we are going to be designing a character, if you will. Or, more specifically, um, draw out a character. Finally get to work on drawing out a character that um, I, I have been designing for a while. And we are going to be doing an artificer, an artificer artillerist that I have made recently. Uh, um, as of late recently for the past, um, week or so. Hold on, the music needs to go back all the way to the beginning. Alright, that should do. So, without further ado, I guess it's about time we actually get to work on this one. Let's see... We, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, change the quality, uh, change the size resolution because it's going to be a little bit bigger so that way the, um, the line art is going to look a little bit much more smoother. Yes, reviewer, this is a cute character and... I intend to go for a bit of a, um, a western vibe when it comes to designing her. Mm -hmm. Let's draw the face first. A cowgirl with a crossbow. Yep. Well, originally I, ha I have a different weapon in mind when it comes to designing um, Apollonia's weapon, if you will. That's the name of our character today. And what I had in mind was, well, a bunny pistol that um, I intended her for her to use. But I know that there's some DMs out there who won't kind of allow that. So I'm going to draw two variants of her. One with her with the pistol. The other with a ballista. Because you can't be too careful, you know? Ooh. Mm. 
Steve, you're more of a bear than about to go back to his cave, Cal says. I mean, sure. I'll take that. <laughs> I mean, you've called me a bear on multiple occasions. Yep. We are going to design her face first because it's going to be the um the one where I focus a little bit more on her details. And once I'm done with that, it'll be um it'll be the rest of her body from there. But yeah, I intend I actually intend to design a Polonia as something in the leagues of um, a test run character, just in case if I want to try doing solo D and D, and um, it kind of a little bit exploded from there because I actually drew um, two characters that will serve as a, a as a test run, and they're gonna be um, two characters that'll be for a Western style kind of game. I mean. Let me see if I can find the um, the blueprint, if you will. Okay, Con concept, concept. Um, I think I'm gone high up. There you are. There you are. These are the original concepts d designs that when it comes to Apollonia and Byron. And Byron, which is her um, working partner, and um, originally uh, the initial name was supposed to be Iris, but I like Apollo Nia better. And Nia, uh, and what and Nia is not a bad name for um, a nickname, you know. I don't know yet what uh, when it comes to designing their um, team name, if you will. I don't know. Something a little bit catchy, something that me that goes with the word pair, if you will. I pair. Like um something something pair, if if you will. Like I don't know. Okay. I remember making my arcane firearm look like a hand cannon. That actually is pretty cool. I wonder, have I notified anybody yet? Uh, have I notified the servers that I know of? Now, I think I'll get to that by the time this stream's over. I try to um, spread the word as much as I can when it comes to um, my stream. Hmm. Am I dumb or is it the lines look feel a little bit too thick? Uh huh. You're asking the wrong guy. But yeah, I think my toe is um, okay. I just gotta make sure it's raised up high and not putting too much pressure into it, you know? Now, for those who are wondering, you're probably, you guys are probably wondering what's with the toe situation I've been talking about. And uh, I don't, fair, it's just that um, I did something really, um, dumb last night if you will because <laughs> I tried to hop onto the bed last night just so I could actually chill right next to Steve but my clumsy ass did a dumb thing like 
I didn't pay attention to how I would try to get up from hop up onto the bed. My foot caught onto the bed sheet draping thing that's from this that that is from the bed. That so much so that it slid that I slid and my right little and my left little toe got the brunt of the got the brunt of the impact what when it got when it smacked into the um the frame of the bed and it hurts okay it hurts significantly bad bad and i i then it i thought it might be fine once it once it finally when the pain finally subsides but nope it turns out it actually bruised by the end, by the next day, and it hurts when I want, whenever I walk. Let's just hope the toe wasn't actually broken. It's not. It's not, honey. It's just that um, it's just bruised badly, you know. And of all the toes, it's the little toe, and that it's like stubbing your toe, but you stub into the wood frame and it you know, bed frame when you just try to get up, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why is one eye a little bit bigger than the other? There we go. I've never actually played an, an artificer before, but... I am willing to give it a try. I mean, most of the time, I'm usually a support main. This one's going to be pure DPS. Mm -hmm. It can heal, but that's not what it's meant for. Yeah, I mean... This is what I actually design when it comes to our Eldritch Cannon. Yes, this little small thing here is her Eldritch Cannon. That it's, is a rabbit. This is not a rabbit. It's called look. He and he, he's got a name, and it's called Rabbit's Foot. That is a mechanical rabbit. This is act. It can also act as a gun and a sentry, and it it can actually act as our sentry. And if it and in a pinch, it can actually act as a good sen. It can actually act as a good hand cannon. Excuse me. By the Lords of Order, what the fuck? <laughs> the artificer can pull support too if they need it, if they need to grant it. Yeah, huh? I didn't know that. Hey, they certainly can. Um, uh, instead of being a primary healer, a healer, it's more of a healer in a pinch. The best we death weapons can are the ones that look cute. <laughs> Well, I kind of, uh, well, I, when designing her, uh, rabbit's foot, I have two things that comes in mind for it. One that'll be, one that kind of serves as that, um, rabbits are based on good luck. And two, I really want to initiate the, um, the Monty Python gag, if you will. Hmm. Well, behind the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I swear to, uh, I swear, I hope that the stream didn't end up dying midway. Uh, I shall, before I get off of my uh, break, I shall check. Switch on my phone. There it is. Alright, there you are. It's still running in your all's end, right? Uh, 
I'm also thinking that's about doing on my end. Okay, that's good. That's good. Maybe I should also move the mic a little bit so that way um my character doesn't move around too much and captures my voice. I mean, to be honest, I did move it closer, that way you guys can hear me, but I think it also has been picking up the sound of the pens whenever they move. I suppose it's an occasion. I just have no funny quips at the moment. Fair enough. Is it if um, we actually got a D and D module where an official D and D module where it actually takes place in the West? That would certainly be something. I mean, Pathfinder is already working on that when it comes to their second edition material. It's just that there's no official material where you get to play in the Wild West in when it comes to D and D, if you will. I mean. You best gotta homebrew that shit. I think I'm gonna give her the um idea that she has her hair down, but she has um two fluffy um twin tails. The uh, half twin tails that are in her ba the back of her hair. Ooh. I have a feeling that the lace is going to be something I'm going to have a uh, field day trying to work on. Honestly, on my side of learning about the Artificer and having access to healing and buffing spells was the best thing ever. Since I like running on support, but I don't like hanging back on relying on deity and patron. D8 hit die and the power of my own? Yes, please. Huh. I think another character, uh, another Artificer I want to play... If there's any subclass I also want to play as an artificer, it's the alchemist class. And mm. I already have a character in mind for the job, um, for the job on hand. Work on the let's work on these puppies. I want to say something, but I don't want, but I shouldn't. Maybe working, maybe playing as um, Nia would actually. Nia, Maybe Nia would actually be a fun, um, wait, maybe it would be a fun start for get, trying something that's outside of support, but then again, I don't know. It's up to you, Honda. If there's anything I really want to pull off when it comes to playing in D&D &D is, well, try to see if I can actually, um, do a D&D &D equivalent of rocket jumping, if you will. <laughs> Yeah. Be a soldier. Yep. I'm gonna do the trolder, uh, trolder move, but in but in D and D terms, and I want to know how I can actually pull that off. What I do know is that my break is unfortunately over. I'm gonna see if there's anything that needs to be done here, and if not, I'll be leaving it around like. 330, 345 ish. Okay. Take care, honey. You take care over there, too. I'll try. I love you. Mm.
Love you too. Mm. Okay. I'd argue you focus on Thunder Wave into a tube and use the Blast Force to launch yourself. But that's just me. Hmm. Would the jump spell also help contribute into doing the, um, well, the rocket jumping mechan- the rocket jumping, um, moveset when it comes to do- when it comes to D&D? &D? Because I think the jump spell can't need- because I could try using the jump spell, but I'm not sure if that's the right, um, ability for to the job, if you will. Did I got the bullets brush in? Uh, did I get the Nope. Nope, I did not get the bullets brush. Oh, fuck. Okay. Hmm. There's gotta be a way for me to actually get these bullet brushes. Um, let me think. Mm. Jump spell would absolutely be the safer way to do it and sh should totally allow this sort of thing. That's good at least. music piece. <laughs> we'll definitely see um, Nia and Byron actually go through a town and this is one of their and this is the town said lit motif. Oh I almost forgot her pendant. I'd say pendant, but it's more like um, a locket, if you will, that was, that was by her neck. Said locket contains um, a small photo of her and her two pa and her parents, and as well as well, I'd say parents, but her her family, because she's kind of like the youngest of the few siblings that uh, of well three siblings that her family ha that, that her family has. try to talk um talk about the small um character history that i actually have for uh, the, the character's um brief history if you actually would um well i'd say history i mean backstory yeah i could talk about her brief backstory if you guys are interested after I did a couple of um, brushes right here. 
Sorry. I just need to just I just need to reach over for my drink. <sighs> Cause it's important to hydrate. Otherwise you might end up getting yourself a really, really sore throat that you will definitely feel it in the next day. Yep. Oh, hi. Hey. Is the power back on in your end? Mm-hmm. That's good. That's really good. I see you're brushing up your artis artificer. Yeah, that's a tongue twister. Artificer. I've always pronounced it artificer. I'm sure everyone has their own way, but artificer seems easier for me to roll off the tongue a little bit. That's fair. But yeah, I am de I am currently designing my latest character, who is the artillerist artificer, Apollonia Marcus, if you will. Her name on uh, her name her name is a is a bit of a pun on itself, because I. Because um, the universe that I'm running at, everyone, some of the some NPCs as well as her family name, are gonna be based on well. Let's see. How should I put this? Clothing brands, if clothing brands or store brands, if you will. Hmm. Yep. With some exceptions, I mean, I I could feel that the rich might have. Uh, the, the richer NPCs, as well as where she's from, have names that uh, are based on the clothing are based on the clothing brands and bunch. As makes sense. As Nia's name is based as Nia's name is kind of based on well, Neiman Marcus, if you will. I see she's going with crossbars. Mm, I am planning to give her um, a little bit of both, if you will. Well, more like, I'd say both, but make alts, if you will, honey. Because um, her initial weapon was supposed to be the bunny pistol that you see here. But I wasn't feeling too confident on how, well, DMs would actually perceive this because... Not every DM is going to be A-OK -okay with guns out there, especially when they're trying to grasp around artificers. So I am going to make a backup, which is the hand crossbow, but still keep the bunny motif, if you will. Mm, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I like the idea. Yeah, because I want to run with the, um, I want to run, I want to run with the motto, always come prepared, if you will. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Wait, where the fuck? No. No! No! Oh! <laughs> uh, all this time I've been drawing in the wrong layer! <laughs> Chat, don't clip that, please. For the love of God, don't you dare clip that. Don't, don't you dare clip that. Don't, don't you dare, please, don't clip that. I'm going to steal her face, and I'm going to put it here. And I am going to put you, wait, down here. And you... There. Now I'm putting you into this mode, so that way I can actually see where the f what what the fuck I'm doing. <sighs> I 
I think this kind of serves as a lesson. Always check which layer you're drawing at. Oh yeah, my using Photoshop for livery painting, so there have been more than a few occasions where I've accidentally done stuff on the wrong uh, layer. That's awful. Could be worse, I guess. Yeah, could have been worse. And now I'm going to restart Steam quickly. I'm going to have to bend her back a little bit backwards. Must not make it that's what he said joke. Brat. <laughs> okay. I think I'll just bring it up anyway that, um, just in case if people want to get to know the character a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna see if I can bring, if I can explain a little bit on her backstory, uh, on the backstory that I initially got for her. Apollonia Marcus was once, uh, well, well, not once, was born into a wealthy family who are very, who are very well known to be, um, Great, innov great innovators of uh, of her of the place of, of the town she was she was living in. Her father was a, a well known tailor, while her uh, was able to uh, um, help design and revolutionize certain um, cl clothing trends. While her mother was a well known ar artificer uh, alchemist, and was able to help. Um, I was able to um, help provide by creating um, outstanding health potions to contraceptives, which are very popular to some of the populace. As such, Nia was proud of her family, but at the same time, she couldn't she couldn't help that she uh, she couldn't help but feel like um, she can't really be her own person because they will. All some people will always um, trail it back to her, uh, to her parents, who are very um, well known and ta well, well known and talented. Even when she tr when she finally has a knack when it comes to um, machineries, as well as design, as well as designing um, rabbit's foot, her rabbit, well blueprints of her rabbit at the time, they would still say that. Um, she is just as uh, she is just as talented as her mother or something which she really didn't feel like um it's genuinely earned as such Nia wa wants to um when Nia finally came a bit of an age she decided to leave home and decided to pursue her own path to see if she can actually make a name for herself and escape from her own parents' shadow that she can actually prove she can actually be um a well innovated and and, and good and, and great person this is the first character that i've ever made i think so far has not have a bit of a tragic um backstory this is just a backstory of, of, of a young woman who's trying to um prove herself that she wants to be as great as her parents if not, and as well as um, have a standing of her own, if you will. Yeah, that's fair. Not every D&D uh, &D legendary backstory needs to have um, oh, what's it, uh, a, a tragic beginning. Hmm. I like to branch that. That's what the DM is for. Yeah. I mean, I like to branch out where I can, you know? And Nia's backstory is actually a well of possibilities you can actually, um, do. Especially since her case is not a tragic one, but one who just wants to prove herself. Yeah, that's fair. Huh? 
Did, did the music abruptly end and only switch to the next town music? What the fuck? What the... Intended Nia to be something of a um a happy go lucky uh, well not happy a lively uh, a lively and spot uh, a lively and um free spirited young woman who actually wants to act uh, who's actually um excited for her um the adventure she brings even when she has to take um the role of a bounty hunter if you will as to serve as like um to serve as like the start for her um inventing purposes yeah that makes sense mm. i really i still intend to use apollonia for uh, well apollo Apollonia, yeah, there we go. Um, I still intend to use Apol Apollonia in terms of, of solo D and D until the situation calls for it, where um, it's set into the wild west or uh, well, oh, oh, the wild west of a D and D world. That until then, I just gotta make. Do I'm just gonna take with what I got and try doing solo D and D for a chance. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm. Where do I know the name Apollonia from? Oh, I actually got that name from... That is based on the Godfather, you know? I swear I've heard it somewhere, but I don't... She, um... Was the short-lived but actual true love of... Michael Corleone fr from the Godfather. Having never seen the Godfather, that's interesting you you've never seen the godfather i have never seen the godfather oh my goodness we really need to fix that i'll take you off on that offer i mean i was thinking maybe we could just host a movie night and then the paper paper playing in and anyone get, can actually try to um give it a shot and watch could definitely work out hmm I mean, when was the last time the inn ever has a movie night? It's been... Uh... Been a minute, hasn't it? Hmm. We should definitely fix that. Oh, yeah. Oof. I just realized, I wonder if I can find that brush in Clip Studio Paint. Um, shit. Um, okay. Is there a bullet brush in there? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I, I actually downloaded it. Okay. 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 For a minute there, I thought I was going to shit bricks. Oh, hey there, Kestro. Fancy seeing you hey, here. Yes, this is a thick cowboy. I, I, I like to design my girls with, well, I like to design Thanks. my girls in, th in, th Okay, brain, I can't speak. I like to design my girls when it comes to pear-shaped body. They either have to be top-heavy or bottom-heavy or both. You know? Hold on, I need some I water. approve of this design choice. Sides. She, she kind of serves as a bit of a foil in... Fo well, not foil. Um, she serves as a little bit of a contrast to compared to her partner, you know. And by partner, uh. I mean like 
her work partner in <laughs> uh, design right here. Let's see. Uh oh. Yep. That's a big boy. He is a big boy. I, I just like my thick kings, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Partners in love. Mm -hmm. I gotta work on this detail. I gotta work on this detail. <laughs> I want to utilize the fur, the fur books a little bit more. I mean, I don't think anyone has ever actually utilized them. Aside from Caduceus for this, from Critical Role, I don't think I've ever seen anyone who's ever utilized the who has ever utilized fur books. You know? Well, at least anyone I know outside of, well, Doc, if you will. Yeah, I have to admit, Furball was so relatively new to me as well. But then again, most of my fantasy exposure is typically eels, of which um, Furballs are whatever. I would explain it. What? You're kind of cutting out a little bit there. Are you okay? Is it bad? Well, for a brief moment, yes, but yes, I think you're clearing up. Oh boy. I will say this though, ahead of time, chat. Um, there's a good chance I may not be able to be around next week if not the next upcoming weeks because sooner or later my boyfriend and I are going to be moving out from the ranch that we're currently staying at and we'll be finally situated into our new home which is the one that's been occupying me in terms of well house renovations lately I mean I know I, I want to apologize again that I have I haven't been really stu stupidly stoked busy and my um and my twitch is bare in some areas it's just that well things I'm uh, things have been getting really hectic as of late I mean I think you don't owe anybody apologies for that you're dealing with life stuff mm. I can't help but, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm telling you not to worry too much. Well, so, right, once you get through all of it, then that'll all be out of the way, and then you can put uh, more time and focus into moving on with the streaming stuff. Hmm. I might also have to find actual work soon because, well, as soon as Steve and I start moving in, we got a lot of new responsibilities that we have to take care of, that we have to worry about ever since we first time moved together back in Hawaii. Ah. Uh, yeah. Let me see what it looks like in a test color palette. Ah, so that's what I did. Real life comes first. Yeah, 
Yeah, I can't. It'd be like that, though. Yes, it does. I man, I can't. When I actually find that, uh, finally find an actual work myself, streaming is most likely going to be a part-time um, thing for me. I'm still an affiliate, you know. Well, it's all going to be about scheduling stuff. Hmm. I just hope the next time I finally got myself work, it'll be stable. Um, it'll give me a stable st stream. It'll give me a, a, a stable schedule, so I actually um, plan around my streamings in that time. Because I still remember very well on my uh, uh, on the days when I was still working as a caregiver that we used to have this one boss who was actually um, a boss from hell, if you will. And oh, fun. I don't know why would she act. Uh, uh, no, I know exactly. And, and the one thing that really drives me up the wall is that um, she would change the, the she would change the schedule every week and and give everyone randomized days for for their work schedules. You know. Not even I'm sp exempt from this. There was a time. Oh, I that's fun. I mean, there was a time I actually worked seven day, the, the full, whole, the full seven days, man, and that's not fun in itself. Jesus. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Okay, what am I missing at here? I think that looks fine. But I'm actually glad that they've um the the care home owners finally are have finally nut up enough to actually get her to get out because and and because of that um with some ex with with some new management and bunch this the work schedules has finally stabilized into uh, proper into proper hours and huh, stability really uh, um. Stability feels great, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I know. <laughs> but what also drives me up a wall, up the wall with that um old crone is that she would try to befriend my mom, but there are times that she actually does um backstab my mom in the back backstab my mom and would still have the audacity to actually still try to be chummy on some days and I just don't absolutely like her at all so when one day when we accidentally um stumble across when they accidentally stumble across each other in a restaurant that we always go to mm -hmm. um when she tried the audacity to um come to the table to see us as, uh, as well as me I just gave her a look and then she kind of backed away a little bit, and my mom said, "Um, you're you, you look so cold that she backed off." I mean, oh dear. It takes a special kind of person to actually push me to a degree that I um look so dead ass um that I look so dead ass a angry at a person, you know? You gotta be. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Stability base. That boss cringe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that damn me. That that damn me on that one because oh. Can we just get an amen that um bosses like that absolutely suck? Oh yeah. Okay, I I really can't wait to work on Rabbit's foot after this. But I also need to work on her weapon too. Mm. Let's 
see. Do you think her design still looks okay, you guys? I don't see why not. Looks pretty good to me. Hmm. Maybe it's just me because I feel it doesn't feel like it's um lacking in some areas, is it? I don't think so, no. Hmm. Is there anything in particular that you're concerned about? Mm. Let me take a look at it again. Maybe I should put some flirtily designs on uh, on two significant areas, like her um, vest-ish and her. Well, yeah, I, I think I know. I, I think this is fine. Maybe it's just me. Mm, if you want to add like the flirtily somewhere, as long as it's big and prominent, which is fitting for that particular symbol, then you should be golden. Flirtilies actually come from her family, uh, come from, it's actually a, um, her house symbol from her family, you know? If I remember correctly, it's also, was historically the symbol of the French royal family. Yep. just kind of shows that she's kind of, you know. But of then again, it, royal blood. Not royal blood, but from a well-off family. Because she two things do associate if I can um name two things that associate Nia would be either lilies if not um rabbits, if you will. Mm -hmm. But I swear I need to uh, I need to start working on doing more for my Twitch. I need to, um, I, if anything, the first thing I need to work on is the channel points reward system, because one of them, I really want to integrate the, um, the Twitch throwing system into that, uh, into the channel points. That way anyone can actually, um, redeem their points by throwing pillows at me. Hmm. That's a nice touch. Yeah. I've seen some, pe I've seen some tre streamers actually do this, and I want to give it a shot. Yeah, I've seen it as well, that usually it's a lot less wholesome than, uh, pillows. Yeah, it can be like that. It can... Certain streamers just love having the, uh, the shitposting style relationship with their chat. <laughs> I also need to start think, figuring things out when it comes to um, next month. Oh yeah? Yeah, because next month is Halloween, correct? Oh, right. It's been so long since I've like properly celebrated Halloween, I kind of forget. And, I intend, and I'm thinking maybe just maybe for the spirit of Halloween month, I'm going to be hosting a poll somewhere down the line in the near future. Where? I get to have my um, followers of my uh, of my Twitter to actually get um, send in some votes, if you will, like vote which costume, oh, yeah. which vote, which um, Halloween costume should I wear, and whatever I I like, I then set a poll and see and let people decide which costume should I actually um, draw out for the next um, art st art stream tw in, on Twitch. Mm. That's a nice idea. Hmm. 
I also need to figure out on Halloween games that too when it comes to um, Halloween month. And I got a and I got an abundance in my library that I need to actually give it a shot and play. Oh nice. Let's see, what else is there? Oh yeah. And when it comes to the reading streams, I I'm thinking about maybe picking some um creepy pastas, if not um well spoopy fanfics, if you will, when it comes to the reading fanfiction. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Mm. Because, well, why not? I can go with the sentiment. Okay. Ink. Ballista. Alright, let's time to draw the ballista. The music ended again, but anyways, hey there, the frog. Welcome to the welcome to the end. He had just st stumbled upon me doing an art uh, an art stream where I'm drawing my uh, where I'm drawing a new character, an artificer. just drawing the weapon the first of the um the, the first um draft of the weapons if you will i'm doing okay currently i'm uh, i'm enjoying um drawing out this character and uh let's see it's coming together if not snagging it's not hitting some snags in the road also my toe uh, um, nah, I, I, I think sharing the story about the toe is enough for one, um, day, for one day for now. Yeah, maybe it by. Weird question. What do you have in mind? Uh, go into detail on that. Yeah. Oh, headset is dying again. What's your, what's your question? Do I like coding? Mm, not really. I've never coded though. I've never coded before. I do some coding for a living, but I wouldn't go so far as to say I would like it as a useful skill more than a hobby. Let's have the bunny foot motif for the ballista. Why she's ha holding her own variant of a rabbit's foot. You like it? Well, that's good. More power to you, my guy. You're free to like anything you like. there so I can actually see the fingers but yeah you're free to like what you I mainly do websites currently oh that's great yeah that's a good way to make money actually really yep I'm turning the front and the back end of websites very in demand set of skills these days Have you tried giving the, a crack on that? Briefly, but most of my work, most of my work stuff these days tends to revolve around testing uh, stuff. So without going into specifics, my coding's mainly focused on the testing aspect. Oh. I 
guess that makes more sense. I mean, it's not all that different. It's just a different part of the process, if you will. I'm 14, and I've only and I've only done it for four years, so it's a hobby for me. Oh, oh, um, okay. Well, that's definitely a good thing that you're getting a head start and a very useful set of skills that you might be able to use to pay your bills later. Hmm. Alright, now it's time for me to make the... make rabbit's foot. Hello? Hello? Hello, Jane. Hi, Makoto. Oh, hey! I'm t so I can't really see the stream right now. I'm actually not at my computer. I'm just, uh... I just figured I'd call and talk while I was working on this, some maintenance. <laughs> well, that's okay. I'm currently drawing my, um, artifact. Oh! Oh, thank you so much for some. Thank you so much, for the frog. Welcome, well, welcome to the paper plane in. We got another, uh, we got another guest at the end. Yay. Let's see. I made a D and D map generator a while ago. Oh, that's great! That is actually pretty cool. When I was growing up, not much people actually um are very computer tech savvy when they're still uh, when they're still trying to learn how to use a computer. I mean, I grew up in a time when they're still trying to use floppy disks in terms of when it comes to um, but when it comes to learning how to use a computer. Good grief, I remember floppy disks. I was a kid at the time. Yes, floppy disks and stiffy disks. And no, I'm not making those terms up. I still remember everyone uses um, Windows XE in, as, their, as their computers for the computer room. What, you mean XP? XP, my bad. But the point still stands. Yeah, the first I, computer I, I ever saw was my dad's Microsoft DOS. Oh man, DOS. Now that's... Man, that's old. old yeah. School. Yeah, pretty much the first time I got exposed to computers, my dad was basically getting his hands on the first... I think it was like Windows 95. But I know he had a DOS computer at one point. It mainly meant as an inspiration. It generates a new map when you go into the website. <laughs> oh, that's that's actually kind of useful. Uh, that's very <laughs> useful. Not to mention the skills that you can learn from doing stuff like that, and basically keep building on that. It's an awesome skill set you can use for basically anything. Hold on a second. I need to blow my nose. Hot. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. My nose is stuffy. I didn't take my anti-allergies. Ugh, I know the feeling. My, uh, my own allergies have been giving me grief. Uh, especially since there's a ton of smoke in my area right now, with all the fires going on. What, are you in California? Uh, no, Utah! Ah. Uh. I miss the era of, of, of DOS gaming. Everyone ha was so much more willing to go wild with what they have made then. Yeah. There are, these days we have a lot of established gaming trends which people tend to follow semi-religiously. So yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Let's see. Wanna see... As in the website that you've made there, the frog? Because if you wish to see, you're free, you know, you'll feel free, feel free to drop it here into the Twitch server if you like. I'll check it a little bit later though, or something. I wonder if 
Rabbit Foot. Rabbit's Foot is actually a good name to, for the War Forge um, bunny that she made. That that she made. It's more of an Eldritch Cannon than an. El it's more of an Eldritch Cannon, if anything. And so, so is Rabbit's Foot the name of a person or the Eldritch Cannon? Since she's an artillerist, artificer. Oh, okay. I believe. Do you mean the Discord believe... server? Uh, no, no. Here in the Twitch, no, in the Twitch chat. Oh, why isn't why isn't it working? Oh, Catman, I see you're finally here. Guess who? It's bad. Hey, uh. What? Grota means frog in Swedish, and you're Swedish. Ah, okay. Okay, I'm gonna try something else. What you doing? So, so I'm having a bit of. So I just got Splatoon three, right? Uh huh. I'm trying. I'm having trouble uh, keeping my save data. I'm having trouble bringing my Splatoon two save data over to Splatoon three. Is it working? Um. So it worked for my brother. So, see what happened is uh, there's like two Switch consoles that that my uh, family's got, right? There's the, there's the one that we started with and then the one I got when I moved out. Oh. So I've transferred most of my save data, except for inexplicably my Splatoon 2 data for some reason over to my new console, but my old data is over on the old console. But I still have yeah. profiles on both. Does that make sense? I think so. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out if I can transfer my old Splatoon 2 data over to my new console so I can bring that data over to my Splatoon 3 file. Yeah, it's something I've been struggling with all afternoon. I'm almost talking. I know, it, it, I know, it sounds confusing. That's, that's what, that's, that's what's got me all bothered. Well, I'm sure you can figure it out eventually. I'm sure. I'm sure. I sure hope so, because if not, I'm going to have to call Nintendo's customer service. And I do uh, not want to have to wait that long. I'm almost talking as much as you at this point. Oh, that's okay. I mean, this is a small um, stream. We are almost done when it comes to doing the inking of this, um, of this character. Although I'm having a hard time trying to get the eyes right. God damn it. Come on. Okay, so... I'm setting up the, uh, I'm setting up the two Switch consoles to get everything started. Looks like everything's good. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, gonna hope it works. You know something that frustrates me about Splatoon 2? Nintendo's got this whole save cloud data thing and that and they didn't think to set it up to go like, oh wait, maybe people will want to back up their save data for Splatoon 3. Or no, Splatoon 2. Ugh, I can't talk. Yeah, it's unfortunate with stuff like that. Okay. Now that I got the ink rabbit done and the ballista, let's give it a shot and try drawing the pistol just in case. 
because again, I want to run with a motto, always come prepared. Ink, rabbit. There we go. Oh wow, we've been inking since um, an hour now. Okay, moment of truth. Come on, please. Nothing? Nothing! Oh. It won't recognize my save data! That's incredibly frustrating. I'm so sorry to hear that, man. Honestly. You would think this is exactly what cloud data is for, right? Right! Okay, that does it. I'm gonna call Nintendo. Well, here's hoping that they do listen. But I have a feeling you may Fingers not. Crossed. I have a feeling you may not be the only one. I'm, I'm sure there are others too that are also feeling the same pain as you're what you're going through. So you're not alone. All right, I'm at least gonna make sure my Splatoon 2 data carried over. Hmm. This inking may look a little bit rough for now, but trust me, I'm going to polish this thing up as soon as we're um, done doing the base of the inking, if you will, if you would call it. Man, I wish I could see what you're doing right now. It is coming up quite nicely so far. designing the bunny pistol but I know that most there I again I mentioned this before I have a feeling that some DMs are not going to be okay with this so I may, uh, so at least I've made the bunny hand crossbow just to be safe they still have yeah, carried the that's fair. sides I will uh, say I like the idea of a bunny pistol that sounds awesome Not to mention, consider, tiny sized Eldritch cannons can be held in the hand. That may be true, but when I, de when I design, um, Rabbit's Foot, hold on, um, I know I have it here, or not, okay, let me go back into, uh, n not that. Here we go. Opening up that file. When I design Rabbit's Foot, I, well, I think Rabbit's Foot is enough that they, they be a, um, a two-handed weapon. Unless Rabbit's Foot should be a lot smaller, if you will. It shoots uh, Um, okay. Ugh, there's so much cat hair everywhere. Oh, I'm Danny Lockhart! Surrounded Lock by feed lines. Yeah, that may be true. Also, hi there, Danny Lockhart! Welcome back! Hello, Danny. We are currently in the middle of doing an art stream, and oh! Been here for a little over an hour, just chilling. <laughs> okay. Designing this weapon was not an easy thing to 
do because I had to do a lot of research when it comes to guns as well as trying to implement how do I implement the rabbit um, motif into them. Yeah, that's always is believable. Saw the opening, it was really good. Oh, it can be a bit of a pain in the backside. Yeah. Alright, let's go and turn off the ink. I mean, turn off the sketch so that way I could start fixing out the ink. aesthetic I mean I that's the intention of her design I intended design characters that is with, with a Wild West theme on them but I know I mentioned this earlier in the chat but I would definitely love to play in a Wild West um, setting of a uh, in a Wild West setting of a um, d and d game if not Pathfinder because well I already get a character that's for the job, but and I but I actually intended her to be something in the, as a test run for doing solo play. Oh, nothing wrong with that. Hmm. But I swear, I if there if there's anything if there's any good thing that came out from this, it's Steve's excitement when I uh, actually brought up the prospect that he can uh, that he can play as Byron. Uh -oh. I mean, when Steve actually saw the blueprint, that is, um, Byron and Nia's, um, concept art, he actually, um, took a liking to it because Wild West setting, uh, Wild West settings is his, um, biggest, well, is what, uh, is what really, um, is what really, what's the right word for the job without making it sound weird? It hits him in the right yeah. notes, you know? Yeah, yes, it, it, uh, it strikes it, a chord with the Texan in him. Yep. And I told him that, um, if you, I mean, and I told him when he saw the blueprint, well, I intended these to be, like, uh, for solo play, but if it really intrigues you enough, I can allow you to play as Byron if you like. And it kind of just took off from him from there. Yeah, I mean, depending on how it goes, you can make it just running the solo rules with either two people, or even just um, at some point looking at one-on-one, -on -one, maybe at a later stage, a small-scale D&D group. Hmm. Guess it depends how it all uh, goes from there. Got Monster Hunter Rise a couple of days ago. Oh, that's great! Are they like your early birthday present? Because I remember you mentioned something like that um, in one of the streams you uh, you talked about um, a few days about, talked about in the past. Yep, and the DLC that came with it. Even better! I need to look at finding the right time to grab the Monster Hunter DLC on sale. For a world, at least. I have a feeling that the moment you learn how to clutch claw, you're... you're gonna really like it, I have a feeling. Sorry, oh, damn back. I don't know how to do what. Welcome back! So how'd it go? Well, I managed to get my uh, managed to get my data taken uh, taken care of for Splatoon 2, but I haven't been able to transfer it yet. 
And since I can't exactly, uh, I can't exactly talk to Nintendo while I'm driving, so, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna wait until I get home to call him. Fair enough. Yeah. And I've, uh, and, uh, I've got you guys on my Bluetooth, so it's not like, uh, so I'm being totally safe, just so you know. That's good, All right, at least. good. So how's the drawing coming along? Well, I'm now in the fixing phase because I had to shrink the um, the ink size of the initial inking process, and I'm now tweaking as I go. Ah, uh, okay, so you're doing some cleanup. Uh-huh. It's important to I do got some, you. It's important to do some testing and cleaning. Yeah, it's important to do some cleanup after you do your initial inking. Yeah. So, question: Do you uh, do you ink uh, your characters with raster or vector layers? Vector it makes things vector. Really... Yes, that is where it's at. It makes things a lot easier for me. Absolutely, especially Clip Studio Paints vectors. They're just amazing. Mm-hmm. They're easier to work with. You can adjust them as you go, and they look nicer in the final product. And if you really want to, you can just make them raster as necessary, from at least from what I've worked in Photoshop. Indeed. That, that may be true, but most of the time I'd rather keep their vector layers because, well, it's easier. Yeah, that's fair. And for me, I do really, like with livery painting stuff, I typically work with raster stuff, but that's because I'm bringing in pre-made items like uh, roundels, etc. Hmm. You know what? Fuck this. I'm gonna turn this into five instead of four. Sometimes you just gotta make stuff up as you go uh, for the canvas, right? Hmm. A little bit on the um, trip. I think I'll give her a little bit of oh, predetermined, pre made tr drifts, if you will. There we go. Trims. There we go. Trims on her hat. There. Some people are actually going to take a like of Nia once um, her full profile has finally, you know, been finished. I don't know. Sometimes you just ha you just take a look at a character you're drawing and think and think to yourself, "Oh yeah, people are going to like this." Mm-hmm. Because some people have a thing for cowgirls, you know. Hey, you know what? They're uh, they're, you know what, they're, they they just have that vibe, you know? I mean, it's only impressed upon Steve, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's make the... It's not just cowgirls, it's like farm girls, too. There's like something about them. I can't put my finger on it, but I know it's there. I think it might be connected to the whole Southern Belle trope, but I don't know. The thick cowgirl, as Danny would say. I mean, I don't... Well, it's a good thing you're, you're not seeing this, because... It, it's a shame that you're not seeing this, Jay, because... Well, I designed this one to be a little bit bottom-heavy. I, I did see some of the sketches, uh... Some of the sketches, if it's the one I'm thinking. 
if it's the one I'm thinking of. So yes, I did see the I did see the bottom heavy part. Do some of you guys actually like it when I make bottom heavy or top heavy or both kind of girls? See, I'm not picky. <laughs> Let's just say I can I can appreciate uh, both approaches. Let's put it that way. I like to. I actually like to play around with drawing chubbier characters. To tell you the truth, it's just fun to. It's just fun to play around with the proportions. Fair enough. Somewhere, somewhere down the line, I'm gonna have to learn how to expand a little bit more in terms of body type. I've yet to draw somebody who is part of the itty bitty titty committee. That's an interesting way to refer to it. Well, yeah. That's a, that's like a, yeah, that's a four dollar way of saying uh, of saying flat. <laughs> but I know that there's. Some, but I know that there's some folks out there who are well flat chasers. Again, that's another way to. Put that's another way to put it. I'm not sure how to. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where I fit, to tell you the truth. Because, hmm. like, my wife is somewhere in the middle. Then again, I may or may not have designed somebody who was part of the Itty Bitty Titty Committee. I need to look at her again. And then again, I. Mean, I, do, <laughs> I, uh, I. All my. Well, most of my female characters are. Uh, I don't know this of um, the lower end of the size spectrum in that department. But none of them have yet uh, seen a game yet, which is kind of disappointing. I'm particularly keen to give my Blood Hunter a run. think of it now that you bring this whole thing up i just re i just remember that oh yeah there's one of my ocs that i actually need to make smaller because she's not supposed to be busty i look back into my i look into my inventory for that one particular character and maybe it's the armor that i designed her but she doesn't look as flat as i remembered probably I mean, I would show, but then again, it counts as spoiler-ish because it's related to another person's backstory. <laughs> Not the spoilers! Anything but the spoilers! Exactly. I mean, I do, I do have to admit my uh, my half orc, my orc character. Excuse me, not half orc. Like, admittedly, part of the reason why I'm. It's like she's uh, flatter is because I'm more interested in muscle mass on a Witcher style character. Yeah, funny thing with muscle mass when there's a when there's a lot of it, suddenly suddenly the fat under the skin is a lot is a lot thin, uh, slimmer, so you don't get as soft a look. Yeah, that that end it would be a bit. Uh, Difficult to imagine uh, larger sizes while flinging a sword around the way a Witcher does. I mean, you could do it. You literally just scream anime logic to the heavens, and you're sorted. The only thing about these uh, about the muscle girls is their thighs, because of all the leg day they, they put in. They vibe. Because of all the leg they, they had to put into the effort making those thighs. I mean, have you guys forgotten that one image, I that one tweet post I share, shared back into the end? 
Uh, uh I which one that was. I can't I, have I can't several. my head. Um, it's the one that's in white. That's all I could say without making it too much, without, um... Without uh, going without uh, me, too explicit. More, or more like, um, summon the ire of, to of well, Papa Twitch, because he still has that belt on this one hand. Yeah. I can't look it up because I'm driving. Ha 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 ha. I woke up the cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of cats, uh, I got to see, I got to see my fam, one of my family's cats while I was over at my uh, at my brother's place. Really? Oh. Yeah. So, so uh, as far as pets go, at, over at the uh, over at Jay's family household, um, we have two dogs and two cats. Well, okay, I I guess since I don't live anymore there anymore, they have two go two dogs and two cats. Uh, uh, one of them is a dark chocolate Labrador named Lily, and we also have a Border Collie Husky mix named Lady. That definitely didn't get confusing <laughs> with uh, calling them out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my sis both of my sisters, they each have one cat. Uh, one of them is a uh, short-haired tuxedo cat that my uh, sister named Gentle Gentleman. Why is he called? And then there's a... Why is he called Gentleman? Mm -hmm. Because of the tuxedo. He's ah. a tuxedo cat. <laughs> he's even got a... He's even got a nice little goatee uh, that's white. Uh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty much a... He's a tuxedo cat that has a white goatee. So thus, he was named Gentleman. And the other one is a long-haired white uh, cat named Milo. Aww. Aww. Milo's a small little boy. Let me fix up those eyelashes mm. because they don't look while like we're, they're standing out. While we're talking cats, my mom um, has a long-haired black, a long black-haired cat named Cosmo. We at first. I uh, thought she was something called York Chocolate, but as it turns out, that's not a recognized breed. Um, mainly because we found that her hair tends to get like stained this from goes from being black to this dark chocolate brown. Um, with a bit of research, I found out that essentially her her fur gets bleached in the sunlight and turns this chocolate brown color. Interesting. Yeah, my dog, uh, my family's dog, uh, Lily, she's, she, I, I said she's a dark chocolate Labrador, but she's, it's so weird, because she's a black lab, but she has brown splotches on her flank. Wow. So we call her dark chocolate. <laughs> well, that explains the mystery. Yep. And, and as for, uh, as for Milo, he's probably one of the most affectionate cats I've ever seen. <laughs> He he uh, hangs around outside a lot, but he will actually like he'll he loves getting pets and he loves getting scratches too. Good cat. Like if you put if you pick if you pick him up, he will actually snuggle up next to your uh, next to your he'll snuggle up against your neck and just climb up on your shoulder. Aww. Such a good little boy. Cole, why can't yeah. you be like that? Cole. Cole. Paul and Cole just pulls up the middle claw. <laughs> and gentlemen, he actually surprisingly lives up to his name. He's probably one of the most reserved and composed cats I've ever seen. My father, uh, his 19-year-old cat named Taya, she's, ever since I house -sitted, was house-sitting the one time, she's developed 
Well, she's, she used to be terrified of everyone because she was a rescue from a shelter under what was more than likely less than pleasant conditions. Um, but she's me mellowed out to us over her lifetime. And when I was house sitting, she seems to have uh, developed a strange habit for lying on top of people and literally rubbing her face into people's armpits for no particular reason. <laughs> Um, back when my mom, when my wife was living with her aunt, uh, her aunt ha is this is this cat lady who owns a ton of cats, uh, and one of these cats uh, was uh, was an incredibly skittish one. But for mm -hmm. some reason, whenever I came over, uh, she would she just really warmed up to me. Aww. I thought it was so sweet. I think her name was Maya. It's been so long since I have been over there. Yeah, I'm pretty confident. It would buy it. Alright, let's make those strings a little bit thin. Okay. Bunny Ballista's ink is finally fixed. Now let's go for the, um... The rabbit. Oh, fuck. I, 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 ah, ah, that's nightmare fuel. Okay, okay, I, I can fix this. I can definitely fix this. Oh, that is not okay. Now I wish, now I, wish I could see what's uh, going on over there. <laughs> I mean, without the sketch, it looks... Oh, ah, uh, mm, no. Absolutely. <laughs> let's, let's just say that the, the lines give the wrong impression at the moment. All right, I will take your word for it. Ooh. The rabbit is uh, incomplete. I'm so tempted to go to this Dairy Queen on the way home, but no, I must be strong. My diet relies on it. I'm, I think I'm... Oh, man. Now I'm suddenly craving for ice cream. I've been meaning... Right? To, I've been meaning to ask, what's everyone's favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate <laughs> milk question. What is my favorite ice cream flavor? More. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I like to uh, I like to experiment with ice cream flavors to tell you the truth. Uh, what is your, uh, what would your preferred flavor be, sir? More and um, how many scoops? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm fairly basic, like I typically look like the most exotic thing I've ever had was. Um, Uh, there's a brand of, what's it called? It's, right, it's a Nestle chocolate brand, chocolate ice cream brand, I think. Ooh, what's it called? I feel embarrassed not knowing the name of it. Okay, question. Do you guys, do you guys have an Arctic Circle where you guys are? An Arctic Circle? I uh... don't. I'm assuming that's a brand and not the actual Ar Arctic Circle you're talking about. And... No, that's a, it, it's a, it, it's a, it's a fast food chain. They serve, they serve really no, thick shakes. You gotta eat it with a spoon. Yeah, I oh I, no, we definitely don't have a chain I, called Arctic I don't, Circle. I don't think I've ever been to one before. Okay, yeah, the, th the shakes they sell are so thick, you gotta eat them with a spoon. Uh, same with Iceberg, if you've ever, uh, if you guys have ever tried it. Like, it, I'm talking like 50s style shakes. Uh, I've remembered it. Uh, the brand of ice cream is called Magnum. And sadly, oh, that's the okay. only brand I will ever use. What? Yeah, like, the <laughs> ice, like the Magnum ice cream? Yes. Yes, it's it's a chocolate ice cream. Well, it's an outer chocolate layer with an inner layer of vanilla. But there's a specific version that's white Caramel chocolate with, it? with almonds. My no, almonds. My, my, are you kidding me? Magnum is also one of my favorite, but I prefer the one that has the caramel on the inside on it. Yeah, I've never really been to caramel, but there's this one flavor. It's white chocolate on the outside with almond on it. It's it's like having a it's like having a cookie ice cream is the best way to describe it. 
man. Okay, have you have you guys ever had like an ice cream that has like uh, crunches, uh, like like pieces of waffle cone uh, mixed into it? I have not, but as I said, I have a um, how do I put this? Well, I have a very restrictive gluten-free diet, so my options are fairly limited. Oh, I see. I see. Well, I will say, having like fresh waffle cone just crunched into your ice cream, oh, it's delicious. I miss, uh, now I'm in the mood to have some ice cream with a waffle cone in it. <laughs> it's, okay, but I one of the best shakes I've ever had. For the same reason. Uh, one of the best shakes I ever had, I got from Iceberg. It was it was blackberries, and they had like full blackberries just mixed into it. It was delicious. I think I'll put a pin on it. Next time, if I if I if there is ever one year in Texas, I'll find that and actually give that one a try. But I'm yeah, telling you, um, it is it's just ah oh, delightful, delightful. Yeah, Nestle and Magnums are my um, how do I put this? They Your are go-to. Guilty, they're my guilty pleasure at lunchtime usually. I right. I got you. All right, now it's time for me to look at this ink. The bunny is inked, the lady is inked, and the weapons are inked. But I think for the time being, we may have to use the ballista for the... I just realized that the ink is sharing the same with the bunny. Mm. <laughs> same there. Uh, I can make this work. I can make this work. <laughs> I'm home, I am free, I am going inside. Nice. Yeah, I suppose it should be easy to separate the layers, right? Yep. I need to fix this rabbit because without the sketch, it looks like it's staring into my soul and I it's unsettling. It's a... And at this resolution that I'm seeing it at, the nose looks like a creepy smile when you're not zoomed in. Man, I need to see this. <laughs> I'm going to grab another drink. Sure. All right, let's um, shrink those. This bunny is so fucking unsettling. <laughs> Alright, I think I can make this work. Okay. Okay, Wait. I'm home. Welcome home. Phew. Alright, I'm gonna switch to my computer in a minute. Let's duplicate that ink, just so in case. And now... We're going to fix up that gun. Because we are now going to implement the gun to mesh well with the ballista. And I am back. Welcome back. Bunny ballista uh, looks quite nice so far. Thank you. All besides, there's nothing wrong with stopping somebody using a hand ballista. I mean, a hand crossbow. But um, if there's anything that really does make me nervous a little bit, it's the mechanics, if you will. Ah, oh, sir. Because, uh, you got that reloading speed you gotta worry about, right? I have to admit, I never really got my head around how the reloading mechanics work for crossbows in D&D. Seems to me that all it does is keep you from using it more than once in a turn. It yeah, doesn't? I was always confused. 
No, I wasn't certain whether reloading took like an entire turn in its own right. Oh. Yeah, I never, I never really understood. So I'm not up to speed with the rules on that. And my only experience with that so far has been playing uh, um, Pathfinder Kingmaker. So, in that, I think you could reload and shoot in the same turn, but I don't remember. Okay. But those were light and heavy crossbows. I don't think I ever saw a hand crossbow. Okay. And of course... I can see why there might be an issue with a gun, because depending on the age of the gun, like a Wild West hero weapon, it might be able to fire more than one round before reloading. I still am waiting for the day that D&D finally um, releases its own Wild West um, theme of a D&D module, you know? Because you got mm -hmm. Artificers, you got Warforge, you also got some elements that you can find in the Wild West, but Where's the modules that could allow you to do that, you know? Because most people will actually just homebrew. Yeah, there are actually honest to god firearm stats in the DMG. Exactly! <laughs> yeah, I think the thing is, is that it depends on the era of firearm, right? You know, like, as I mentioned, a six shooter versus a single, a single round, um, cap lock pistol is a very different weapon. Hey, I'm back, and my voice sounds better than ever, thanks to this microphone. Alright, now let's go and merge these. Also, welcome yeah, back, I think, I think a whole um, era-appropriate module official from D&D would be useful for that, not only just from the cowboy aspect, but also like the stuff that was happening around say, Europe during that time period. Maybe I should make those lines a little bit... Maybe I should make this drawstring a little bit thicker because we're talking about one that could actually, um... fire the ballista... Well, fire the ballista and it will be, you know... <laughs> I was going to say also the stuff happening around Africa at that time, but I don't think D&D was to do it or module about um, African colonialism. You can make... It, it reminds I mean, there me is a, there is a, some unfortunate things going on in Zimbabwe. But we're not going to talk about that. It, it reminds me. About... It reminds Sorry, me so much from that one segment from well. It reminds me a little bit of that one segment from history from around the world. You can make a relit. No, don't. You can make. <laughs> Sorry, what? Like you can make a religion out of this. That that has been go um. An ongoing running gag until they talked about um, the French Revolution. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was mainly thinking about the scramble for Africa, which is uh, probably not something that you want to advertise as a D and D module to your fan base. Mm, you? Uh, nope. Mm. Okay, I can finally see what you're working on. Yay! All right. Let's for this example for the stream. Let's make one that is based on the um, ballista for this one. For I mean the the bunny ballista, the hand crossbow, if you will. I do like the the rabbit themes for the uh, for the weapons here. Thank you. I just realized something. I forgot to make her fringes. Do I have them in? The library of brushes that I have... No? Good loss, the hips on this woman. Why not? <laughs> she, she wasn't kidding when she said... And, um... The, you know, she was referring to the downstairs department. Yeah, I know what you're... I know what you were talking about. I'm just... I'm just, like, seeing it again. I'm like, good grief! They're lo They're wider than her shoulders! My god, this woman can birth, give birth twins at the same time. Y'all are taking horses, but she's taking a stagecoach. I call myself I'm terrible. I'm sorry, what?
Also, because I am a total nerd about this sort of thing, I went looking up the stats, and it turns out a six-shooter is actually covered here. I'm sorry? I'm s Do tell. Give me the dates. The six-shooter is a 2d8 piercing weapon. It uses ammunition, of course, and has to use a reload action after every six shots. Gosh darn, that's a statement. That was a statement. Yeah, it'd it be like that, Ruby. It'd be like that. <laughs> but that that there's there's a six shooter. I th I thought they don't have that in the actual. Mo what the fuck? <laughs> Man, I, every day I keep getting I keep getting like weirdly. <laughs> Uh, every day, I'm, I'm like surprised by what is and isn't covered in D&D. I gotta check this out as well at some point. I just actually, put it in the TV of, chat. Actually, speaking of D&D, uh, one of my friends is actually... Uh, one of our mutual friends is going to be organizing a Mario-themed campaign. Oh! Yeah, I'm going to be hosting it on my channel. Nice! Yeah, there it is. Modern item revolver, two d eight piercing damage. Hey, well, how about what that? the? Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> Reload with six shots. How about that? Hey. It also includes semi-automatic pistols, bolt-action rifles, automatic rifle. Pulls up to 30 rounds and double barrel shotguns. Huh. Considering all the gun mechanics they were able to work in, I'm glad they made mechanics that revolve around them. <laughs> Honestly, I'm more surprised they bothered covering energy weapons. Yeah, that's also true. They have laser weapons, antimatter, and laser rifles. Okay, let's um, fix this up here. I and know. Again, I guess it must have taken a long time to think about it. Otherwise, it would have been a shot in the dark. I actually like the movie Shot of the Dark. I mean, it's the one movie that introduced me into the Pink Panther series, but I always keep finding myself coming back to a shot in the dark. It's it's funny, and it's also dark. You know? C dark humor, if you will, if you could put it. Yeah, but then again, it might get a bit too triggering. For some audiences. <laughs> okay, I guess finally that looks one of my puns gets acknowledged. All right, I guess that looks pretty good. What? To be fair, it's mostly DM info. Is this DM info? Oh, hey, my bubble. This is from the Dungeon Master's Guide. So. One second, I need to open. I need to open the door. The man is home. But yeah, this entire set of stat blocks is from the Dungeon Master's Guide. I just put it up because I figured, why not? It's not yeah, that good. why not? Not to mention, I might be Very using cool, some of these yeah. myself someday, so... Sweet. I mean, assuming I don't get wrapped up in Starfinder instead. <laughs> I've always been more for sci-fi than fantasy, you know? Yeah. I, I, I kind of, like, uh, see, as far as sci-fi concerns, I like having fantasy mixed into it. That's kind of why I I prefer Star Wars over Star Trek. Yeah, science fantasy is the best thing. Science fantasy is awesome! I never... I'm gonna make a little bit of a confession. I've never mm -hmm. watched Star Trek. It's okay. Well, I, I, saw like, I saw like one episode and I kind of got turned off from it. It was a bit too cold for me. But yeah, like legit. Give me someone who can fire a gun with one hand and fling lightning with the other. Yeah, I'm a, I've always had like an idea of Ooh, make that, with magic. I ought to make that into a character. Maybe I should make the head of the rabbit a little bit wider. Like cyberpunk, but with magic instead of cybernetics. I mean, right. cyberpunk has magic. Does it? Yeah. There's an entire set of mechanics just for mages. Like right, right. 20 in tabletop or... Oh, wait, I just realized you're you're probably referring to Cyberpunk, the tabletop campaign, and not the game. Yes, oh, that's yeah. what I was saying. 2020 or 77. Yeah. 
I'm just sticking around for a short bit. Oh, Casey! 77 pussied out. Yep, that's about me. I'm... Hold on, Casey! I'm getting your... Now that you're finally here, I'm gonna get your react image. Huh? Alright. Yeah! For the Oh, she never implemented yours. So, what I was gonna say is another group, um... You mean, like, the thing on the... Hold on. On the thing on the stream, yeah, so... And there was a system we wanted to use. What was it called? It was this one sci-fi system. But what made it interesting is that um, the character creation involves actually doing Browser roles size. to see how your character progresses through life. Like you have to see whether they succeed in getting an education or would work and through various stages of their life, depending on how much you want to age them up. And during that process, you'll die. Your character can die during character creation. That uh, sounds like Judge Dredd. Let's see. It's not Judge Dredd. It's uh, God, why have I forgotten? This called? Hang on. But there you go. Let's see. I love Star Trek, but a good treasure planet is hard to pass up. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. Oh yes. Please, please, more of that. Traveler. Can, Can we just Traveler. say that um, Treasure Planet should be the one thing Disney should have remaked? Uh, I've heard a take on that on Twitter, I, but I also wholeheartedly agree, even though I haven't I seen it. I don't know, because 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 oh. uh, the because the old Treasure the original Treasure Planet is already amazing by itself. I don't know if it should be touched by the remakes. Oh, I, I think I got that mixed up with Atlantis. I, that's the one I haven't seen in years. Ah! I never saw the original Treasure Planet. Wait, speaking of Atlant speaking of Atlantis, I want to fir firmly believe that Roar is the first uh, is the is the first proper um, Disney twist villain, if you will. Yeah, Roar actually is a really good twist villain. Like you can see the signs ahead of time, but he's not immediately the type of person you think, "Oh, this is the villain." I see the Atlantis in here, so I, I completely forgot what some characters are. Yeah, Rourke is that uh, is that military guy that that was obsessed with turning the the crystal was selling the the crystal heart as uh, <laughs> at, I, I don't know for something he was gonna sell it to the Kaiser or something. I see. Yeah, I also want to let you know, um, I noticed that your banner is drawn by. I wasn't expecting to see that your banner was drawn by Nintendo. Yes, I am in fact good friends with her. Ah, I've I've seen some of her content in the past. Yeah, she, like she, she and I like, go way back. Uh, uh, that... I see. That's small world, huh? Because like I do like how in some of her comics, she has like, she intermittently has Kirby on like the sides commenting on what's going on. Oh yes, that's one of the Kirby. things that endeared me to her content. Yeah, coming back to the idea of remastering her, I would rather Disney does not do that because based on all of the current remakes that they've been making. Yeah, based on current just... trends, I'd rather they just stay away from that model. Especially yeah, for their underrated gems. And I yeah. was going to say, like, I felt, I remember that there were, like, a few remakes that were considered good. Like, I think the Jungle Book one was actually, people like that one, from what I know. Yeah, the, Jungle Book was, ah. the Jungle Book was decent, and so was Cinderella, but everything else, not so much. I thought that the Beauty and the Beast one was okay. I did like, I did like how they I... expand on some things, but I guess I... to each their own. I think for me... Yeah, I... I, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Makoto. I think for me, I was like, hey, where's my extra thick? <laughs> Wait, sorry, for which thing? No, I mean, when I look back into um, the Beauty and the Beast movie, I mean, Gaston is not so bad, the actor who played in that, but all I could ever say is, where's the thick? <laughs> uh, which character so, again? It's in so his head. I, so I I actually really hate the Beauty and the Beast remake because oh they got so many things wrong and so many of the uh, the actors couldn't sing and and they just had to keep using they uh it just there's just so much wrong with it when the original was already so good it got an award for a reason I guess my memory's probably rusty on that, so I'll probably have to listen to something from it again. And I, I will say, for the Gaston they got, it, they they could have easily cast a bodybuilder that could sing. Like, oh, I don't know, John Cena? Oh my god. Honestly, Lord, like, if there's one John thing I wish Cena they did, it's. <laughs> I can't you look know, up. I cannot think it now. I can't. I was going to say, like, 
don't do me. Like I speaking of stuff you that can just like call um, me Jay. You can just call okay. me Jay. Sorry, I'm I'm still not used to interacting with you all that much. It's a new fix, so it's all good. Yeah, I was just going to say it like speaking of things I feel like they should have done.